So Guru Guy Chase, thank you so much again for, uh, you know, taking the time tonight and being with me and agreeing to, um, you know, speaking with me tonight about some FMA and some Kali. No problem. Always, always willing to help, especially in this field. Yeah. <laughs> especially well, in know, this field. As I, was, as I was just mentioning, um, the first time I met you and last time I saw you was, uh, you know, we were uh, at the academy and I was, I had partnered up with Guru Victor Gendrano. And he kept telling me, he was like, Joe, look, um, do you know who Guy Chase is? And I was like, I am familiar with the name. I don't know him. And he's like, that's him right there. That's him right there. Watch how he moves because he has a very, um, you know, characteristic movement. And so we're trying to do some Brada and or whatever we're doing. And trying to, I was trying to watch you, but then not seem like uh, some creepy, you know, stalker that was just like watching you. And I had told Guru because... That the academy is so close to In and Out, so I've been smelling it the whole night during you know during the training, and so he had said, "Do you want to get some food after?" And I was like, I, "It doesn't matter, but I, I really want some In and Out at some point." And so afterwards, he was like, "Oh, do you mind if um, through a guy comes with us?" And I was like, "Sure, that's fine." He's like, "We can go to In and Out." And I was like, "No, I mean, I, it seems like he's like a healthy guy. I don't know if I want to. I don't know. I don't want to do that." And you were so cool about it. And I felt, I did feel guilty and bad. I'm like, here's this guru guy, Chase, and he's an old friend of Guru Victor's. And, you know, we're going to in and out only because I've been, like, talking about it with Guru Victor the last, you know, the second half of the day or whatever. So, anyway. Yeah. In was, and out's a famous place there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is, you know. And then you had talked about some stuff at dinner that night that really got me interested. And I've seen you um, on Facebook and seeing the posts that you have. So, just have a lot of questions but um you know more than anything i just wanted to thank you for your time oh no no problem no problem really you know anything to help really you know that's the that's really uh you know um that's that's the the good step is anything to help you know, especially with knowledge because knowledge is not it's not transferred like it was before it's transferred much differently now mm -hmm. so we we get it so in, in in today's especially now right so it's really increased to sort of like TV and, and electronically now. Whereas prior, even well, you know, it was going that way anyway, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, back in the day, um, you know, it was transferred through one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was transferred to, to, to sort of like, you know, um, uh, you're next to your instructor, you're with your instructor in the same room, you know which is a whole different, I've always said, you know, it's a whole different feel. It's a whole different caliber to learn that way. You know, I can, I can clearly remember the days and I, you know, I mean, any of the old school guys will tell you, you know, back in the garage days on Glencoe Ave, right? Back in the Asanto Academy, it was just in a little garage, you know, warehouse type of space, you know? And there'd be like eight people in the advanced class or something, I don't know, something, you know, wasn't very many, 10, you know? But there's a different feel in that environment, you know. It was the same thing I think in Guru Ted's class on Saturdays. It was just it was just it was a small group. So, you know, in that environment, it's just there's a different type of um, energy that evolves. Mm -hmm. You know, you do get custom to having your instructor's energy around you. Yeah, that body feel, the the closeness of a body, you know. Um, and the wisdom, right? So it, it seems like that energy when they speak, because you can always watch people speak on TV and it is inspiring, but when you, in person, it's just totally has a different type of energy level to it. Absolutely. My, you know? Well, especially with someone, I mean, uh, Guru Inosanto is my main instructor, but I've trained with other people as well who are very influential and um, you're absolutely right. It's very different. You know, I, I like to watch through on video and when uh, Simo Cookie posts things of, you know, him talking and explaining. And if anything, it sort of uh, reminds me of the time that I was with him. But you're absolutely right. There's nothing like to just be there. Even if he's saying something that he had said before, um, I think there's maybe there's something that's beyond the words and beyond the language that's still being transmitted. Well, yeah, in his case, too, you know, because he does it so much and he's done it for so long that he's just he's transferring out of just pure, um, 
you know, character. He's not, it's, he doesn't break character at all. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And he's sort of like, um, and if you can imagine, like Guru Dan to me, like, you know, he was, you know, very, I mean, I was very close to him for what I was at the time back in the day, like eight years straight. So, so um, but then, you know, you, then you get next to Ben Lagusa and then that, the knowledge is there for sure, you know, by far, but then, you know, like Guru Dan's, a lot of the Guru, if you went in front of Guru Dan, he has a lot of the historical and he has a lot of the technique, right? Mm -hmm. But then you get around somebody like Ben Medusa and he has a very sense of like inner spirituality that he adds to it. You know what I mean? A very deep sense of even deeper vastness to it, it seems, because he was Floro's number one, right? And he was, he was actually Guru Dan's teacher. So, I mean, Guru Dan learned from Floro, but Ben Medusa was a big influence to, to Guru Dan. Because remember, a lot of people don't, and I remind people all the time, remember, Ed Parker wanted Ben Lagusa to be his first black belt, not Guru Dan. I didn't, I don't think I ever knew that. I never, I don't think I ever. That's a true that. state. That's, and, and they wanted Ben Lagusa to be Cato, not Bruce Lee. I had heard that. I had heard something like that. <laughs> yeah. So it, he was already teaching Ed Parker in the backyard, be, you know, before Guru Dan was a black belt. That's why Kempo Karate has the sticks and the trapping hands and the Perry Check Killing Blow. Mm -hmm. That's why Kempo Karate has the, the bullseye sign. That's Ben Lagusa's influence of the angles. Mm -hmm. So it had, it, it has a, so can you imagine it's like going to Guru Dan's teacher, right? So it has a, but those guys taught on a, a much, like it, it, because they didn't teach on a commercial level. Yeah. So there's so they kept the art is more tradition than they did commercial because as you know when you teach this stuff you in order to teach it on a mass scale you have to commercialize it like, you know even Guru Ted said that a years ago if you take one dollar I remember him saying if you take one dollar for JKD classes you're already commercialized you already you know you already have to change it you know you already have to change the method of it so. Those guys never had to do that because they had good jobs and they never left a job to, you know, sacrifice for teaching the martial arts at the time. So they never compromised, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I first learned from the Villa Villa guys, I was probably one of the, I, I know I was, I think me, I think there was one other person, but you know, I was the only white in there and they speak such hard language. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're very, they speak that pigeon talk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's still very hard to understand sometimes if you can't pick that up, you know? Yeah. But they'll let you know you're white immediately. You know? Going back, <laughs> they, 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 um, they, did, I didn't, did you say that Guru Dan was Ed Parker's first black belt? He was. I didn't know that. He was. And he, in fact, so what happened was, is Ed Parker wanted Ben Lagusa to be his first black belt, but because he because Ben Lagusa was teaching him in his backyard, mm -hmm. but he could not because he had a paid homage to Floro Villabello, because mm -hmm. that was Floro's that Ben Lagusa was going to was was pruned to be Floro's number one mm -hmm. compadre. They used to call it compadre, you know, or you know his number one two <laughs> So he was teaching him all the moves and he was teaching him everything that he could you know teach. So he couldn't change over because he had sworn in blood ceremony that he wouldn't change over. Mm -hmm. So he, he went, he wouldn't change. That's so weird. they made it. Yeah. So they, so Guru Dan had stuck up and they made Guru Dan his first black belt. Wow. I think that was in 50, when was that? 19, I could be wrong. Either 50, couldn't have been 52. I think it was 56. I think it was around 56, somewhere. I, I think it was 56, somewhere around there. You know, if my historical limit uh, is data is right, I can find out. I just go to my office. I get all, you know, in, in, in all my manuals and stuff. So, Well, you have an interesting history, and I, I really enjoyed your the interviews that you've given. I really like the one that you did with, um, with uh, Pete Dwight, where you talked about how you – came over to LA pretty much a teenager. I did. I was 18. 
I was, I was actually, I was, I, when I first met Gurdjieff, I was 18, I flew to South Carolina, and then he invited me to a school, he said, listen, I, I, you know, I want to invite you out to teach you, and um, at that time, we're going way back, way back, we're going, you know, I mean, not far, far back, but a lot, you know, where it's, it was, it's, it's in the 80s, and I didn't know, you know, I was just a kid, I was just, you know, and I, but anyway, um, I know it was Francis Fong came up to me and goes, listen, you got to take that opportunity if you, because he said, and, and good dancer, listen, I can't feed you, but I can let you live in my school. I didn't, wow. you know, like, live in your school. Like, what, what, what? You know what I mean? I didn't even know, you know, I didn't know what that yeah. meant. So anyway, make a long story short, I did, I, 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 uh, I packed bags and I, and I, and I moved to LA. When I was 18, I didn't even know where I was. I, went, I mean, I went from a state that had barely 900,000 in it to a city that had millions and I didn't even know where I was. It was just, but I'll tell you, I just, um, you know, I got, I, I got an apartment and, and then I, I lived in Venice, believe it or not. And back in that day, Venice was terrible. I lived on fifth and Broadway and Guru Dan used to send uh, Ed Frankel over and a bunch of guys to work with me on weekends because that area was called ghost town. It was filled with, uh, you know, and I found that out after living there for a month that it was filled with gangsters and gunshots and people they. So he'd send people over there all the time to check on them. It's pretty funny. But I always, you know, I all, I, all I did was work and all I did was study. So I'd never really got into anything that I was, you know what I mean? I didn't, mm -hmm. in fact, I didn't even explore that much. I just, I knew where work was. In fact, well, my work brought me all over LA, but, you know, in the school, that's, I mean, that's really all I did was for eight straight years. I, just, I didn't do anything. I didn't surf. I didn't, you know, wow. I didn't. I just, you know, work, school, study, work, school. It was just, that was, that was all I did. Yeah. You know? Well, I remember, so. cause I lived out to, at the Academy. Um, I didn't live at the Academy, but I lived out in LA far in the East, like as far East as you could go in, uh, in LA County. So actually close to Pomona, that's where we used to live. And uh, you know, I would, I had heard about Venice beach and whatever, Muscle beach and stuff like that. And I remember going there and I was like, this place is not, this place is not nice. There was like weed everywhere. And uh, yeah. it just like, wasn't, it wasn't nice. It was pretty similar to, I think when people, I'm not too far from Washington DC. And so I think people think that Washington DC is this kind of clean and pristine um, government city. And when they, when they get to DC, that's not how it is. So um, it's, you travel outside of DC, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It gets to be, yeah. Right, that's for yeah yeah it was like it's and it's now it's you know it's worth it's it's weight and gold i, I should have bought a house there because it's worth a lot of weight and gold you know what i mean yeah but uh, uh you know uh, i used to live a few houses away from dennis hopper and stuff and you would never know it because it's it's just weird it goes from a small house to a warehouse there in venice and stuff mm -hmm. but i always liked that area but it increased in value as time goes on because of the real estate and everything of that nature you know mm -hmm. but Back in the day, it was really bad. They had a lot of gangs, you know. It was yeah. really bad. It was really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, Guru, one of the things that you had said that night was uh, you were describing how in the training, in the uh, Villabro Largusta training, that they call on the spirits to come bless them and bless their space when they train. And at the end of the training, they send that blessing on with the students and I, I just for some reason i found that so powerful um and that's from that statement uh you know i had wanted to ask ask you more about it because there is a side that, and you'll reference it the kind of traditional spiritual side of kali that i think people know about but not too many people they know that it exists but they don't really know about it and they can't really speak on it so so I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, because I'm so fascinated with that aspect. Well, I mean, um, so, yeah, so, you know, especially, well, for one, like, like um, a lot of Filipinos, for, well, right, they're very spiritual anyway, right, mm -hmm. Catholic or Christian and, and based and, and stuff of that nature, but, um, Ben Lagusa was very, uh, you know, out of all Filipinos, out of all my teachers, I would have to say, you know, uh, upon two on Ben was very spiritual, extremely. I mean, very deep, very, very, I mean, almost to a point would almost make your hair stand up, you know what I mean? And that meaning, so what does that mean? You know, I mean, 
it was almost like being uh, in front of a preacher and a great Kali master, right? Or, or, or you know, a, a, like a monk, like a Shaolin monk almost, right? He practiced the way of the warrior ways and yet he practiced, you know, the scholar ways. So he was very spiritual in a very deep sense. And he carried that all the time. But what happened was, is that he had carried the old Kali ways into the Villa Villa Lugusa Kali, right? So, and he, they never broke that. They always sort of like incorporated that. And I always, you know, it's, he didn't make it up. It's something that was passed down through them through generations, you know? So when you first become, uh, what they say, uh, uh, you know, your first guruship, they link you through, uh, they, or, or even before your guruship, but when you become a student, they link you through a, 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 um, a prayer that's, it's an old Latin prayer. And I remember uh, Tuhan uh, Mel Lopez, you know, they, they touch you on the shoulder a certain way and stuff. And they, they and, I mean, this prayer is long. So it's not a sh two sentence prayer. It's, you know, it goes on for like five minutes. And I said to uh, Pantu and uh, Lopez, Mel Lopez, who was one, one of my main teachers, right? And he goes, uh, I said, how do you remember that prayer? I, I don't like, do you, you speak Latin? He said, no, that's been taught to me from day one from Ben. So you, can you imagine that's been, and then I said, well, how do you learn? Well, that's been taught from Villa Brillo right now. I said, Villa Brillo, like what, you know what I mean? So they teach that right down the, the, the line. And, you know, the same with the blood ceremony, right? They take your, they prick the blood on the forearm and they burn it in the chalice, right? And they burn it with the wine and, the, and, and then they, 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 they write on a piece of paper, you know, your name and a prayer. And then, you know, when you drink it, you're linked. Like, oh, you know, they, 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 Katadina uh, it means that you're linked to the other gurus and the, the, the past life and the, and the present and the future. And that's where the three Ks sort of like come in too as well, what a lot of people don't know. They see it in the triangle, right? So they see, you know, the, 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 the three Ks of like, you know, Katasas on, Kali Kali on, Kali Kali on. Right, those are the three Ks. But that goes, those three Ks, that was the Filipino flag, right? That was the national flag, the three Ks. Now, that doesn't mean Ku Klux Klan by any file of the cry, you know what I mean? People don't have the history right, you know? But those three Ks were actually in on the Filipino flag, right? That meant loyalty to your country, your family, your, you know, and so on. But that actually transferred into warriorship and war when they went against the Spaniards, right? So that was all part of that. It was, you know, and so, so what does that mean? Well, it's like, it's like the same watching a Thai boxer do a wide crew before he fights. They spiritually put themselves into a trance of mental state where they can fight beyond the physical norm, right? So that's what Flo did before his death matches. He ate one egg only, a boiled egg. And the egg was a representation of life and death in one. And they said once he ate that, he would just start beating sweat coming out of him. And it was the forecast of him winning the fight. He had swallowed the past, living in the present, and he was going to be bound into the future. Yeah. So that's how he put all that involved into his uh, before he had, um, you know, stepped into a ring. Mm -hmm. And so before we train, we call into, let's say, you know, the universal triangle, right? Cut passes on, right? And that means that the highest, you know, uh, uh, it's, one of the, it's, the, it's one of the highest triangles, you know, that we know. So they usually call this like Trinity Triangle, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and you know, the universal triangle is like this, it's like, uh, you know, the supernatural spirit is one side, you know, you as the individual is one corner of the triangle. And the other corner of the triangle is the goal, or what we know as the subject or earthly object. It can be either one. And what we do is we connect those three dots of the triangle. And that's just, that's one of the triangles that we actually form we we base up one of our prayers in but we base the prayers on three of them you know like kali kali gong is one of the other triangles what's called, well that's to see your strength it means achieve what's inside of you right and the the other is the um uh the point of contact 
right? So what does that mean? The point of contact means the end of your stick, right? When it strikes something, that's the point of, 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 of what the, the contact. Mm -hmm. And the objective, what is the objective? The target, you know, that's, but that doesn't just assume in combat. That can be assumed in life too, philosophy. You mean, so you can say the seat of your strength, the point of contact with your, maybe your goal is, right? And the objective. So it falls not just in combat, it falls in life itself. So, you know, and then of course the third triangle would be like, uh, is uh, Kali Kali Han, that's rhythm triangle. That's usually the first triangle that you know because it's physical and that's, that's uh, what they call the head, hand and feet, right? To rhythmatically move with your head, hand and feet and to rhythmatically strike the head, hand and feet mm. in a rhythmic way where they can't pick it up. You're in rhythm. So when you have those three Ks lined up, it's virtually, they say, impossible to beat you because you are now spiritually, physically, and emotionally involved into your, into your, into your, you know, your, your, uh, your, 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 your realm, right? Your aura or your, your body or your spirit and, and the people around you. They say, you know, you, you don't become, you know, become unbeatable, which if you think about it in a lot of ways, you know, we see people teach today. We even see fighters, right? So one of my highest rank, Mark Delagrati in Boston, right? Carnage 60 UFC fights. So, you know, MMA fighters are very physical, right? But the mental, you think about it on a mental level, right? I mean, people can tap into that. And if they do tap into that, they become unbe unbe unbeatable. Strength becomes beyond strength because it becomes spiritual now. Mm. You know, and that's where the three Ks come in. So every time that we would train, it's without the, you, they do not second guess it. It's, it's mandatory. They live by um, the sword and they die by the sword of those. You know what I mean? So they, they keep that system very, very traditional they don't break line at all and so they call in the past so like floral has passed away ben has passed away they would they call them in and they even call in the relatives like if your wife or husband or child they call them in to be in the same room with you as you train and then when you when you train they close it out so they can go now on to the, the to back to the afterlife so they make them part of them all the time. And I always said that, you know, it, 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 when you're training in the colony with the empty hand weapon or when you're moving, there's some sense of that that actually makes the outer world disappear. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. I remember many times where it didn't exist, right? And they love to train at night. Mm -hmm. They love to train at night until one o'clock in the morning. It's just, it's something, and it's weird because training late at night, there's just dead silent. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no sounds of cars and will, whistles and bells and, you know, it's no, no, none of that. It just, it all kind of, you know, disappears, mm -hmm. which is a strange feeling, right? Because you don't have any distractions. You don't have any, you know, it's just, it, it's just, there's a dead silent at all the time, you know? So uh, I, 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 again, you know, it does leave you in a sense where you just become you and one with you and one with the instructor or one with the weapon. And, uh, and, and, and in my opinion, what happens is that you flow more because you let go of everything else. There's nothing really to hang on to or to bound yourself to. Really it's interesting how they, how, how, they, how they connect all that together, you know? There's some writers, uh, FMA writers, uh, and there's also, you know, Filipino cultural writers and things like that that will talk about that spirit of kind of sacred time and space or um, uh, transcending time and space is something that a lot of Philippines, it happens in Filipino culture. There's a belief in that, uh, whether it's the sort of esoteric history and nature of the Philippines or whether it's in the training. Uh, but even I'm a Catholic, and even in a very kind of um, Christian uh, mythological sense, there are certain times of of the day or certain times of the night that are um, 
a little bit more pronounced. And um, mm. I've, I frequently find that I am very drawn towards this idea that Kali is kind of an energy that's beyond us. And so when we train Kali, we're not just practicing moves and learning things, but we're sort of accessing an energy that's, we're learning to access an energy that's already, you know, in the universe. And so uh, it makes sense that in those times where there's not as many distractions, not as many noises that we could do that. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, so I, yeah, so, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, you think about, like, you, like, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you know, you think about, like, a fight, right, like, you, you know, in, you can go to, like, an MMA fight that'd be, you know, UFC style, and go on that big scale and stuff like that, and you think about, but if you think about a flow Villa Villa fight, right, where, two men are entering the ring, you know what I mean? And it's very highly unlikely that two men are going to walk away, mm -hmm. right? And to be on that level of, of where it's, you know, one guy is going to die and one guy is going to live, the level of your even sincerity has to be true or you're not going to live. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine the scale that Flo was on mentally, right? And probably even spiritually. But if he and which he did he certainly did tap into that but one of his you know we know that for a fact but remember one of his great teachers was was josephine she was totally blind at birth so about her. yeah yeah so I, I mean you know obviously nobody's really met her because she's you know it's, it goes back that time but it she is it was i, it, I was, I guess some of the older, much older students were in, in Samoa, uh, yeah, Samoa and did see the grave, but uh, she did exist. Mm. So, you know, um, but that was his, one of his greatest teachers was the fact that he, you know, had learned from a, from, from a female that was totally blind. Mm -hmm. That's how he got to do Mohara Tayada, the circle patterns, was from her. Oh, really? Yeah, because she was blind. So the, 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 ta the, the, what they call tappy tappy or the or the check in hand was very important because she always had to check you to find out where you was because she was blind. So she Excellent. would always be she would always flank either side of your shoulder. She was never in front of a stick. Uh -huh. She was either on the you know less power of it or on the end power of it. Hmm. So you, she was never in the middle of the arc. And that's what got to get him to move in the circle patterns, the donut. So when you see the old donut patterns on the floor in the old academies of photos, but that's where it originally it comes from, which mm. is from her. So you, so you think, so if, if that's true, right? And he, would have, he had already killed men already mm -hmm. when he met her. So he had gone to that island because he had heard that there was a famous stick person that could, was beyond him. Mm -hmm. And they made him clean the village for a month. Really? Yeah, they made him clean the village for a month, and he cleaned the village for a month. And he goes, "Where is this fame?" And then, and then finally, they brought her out. And uh, he 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 was furiously mad. The story goes because they made him clean for a whole goddamn month, I guess. And he was really mad. And 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 uh, and he was and, and they said no. This you know. And then um, she he didn't believe it. And he can't. He became so enraged. And then she said, take the stick and hit me. And he thought it was a joke, according to the story. And then um, this is right from Ben Lagusa. So it's, it's right from the horse's mouth. And then uh, she, he wouldn't hit her because he had already killed men. And he thought it was just some, he thought that the village had taken advantage of him. Right? Mm -hmm. So she, she uh, I don't know how it, how it is in her language or her culture, or, or, but she mocked his name his family name mm -hmm. somehow you know what i mean so somehow she was disrespecting not just him but probably his mother or father or whatever you know and he swung at her and she was and supposedly the story goes she weren't even there she was behind him tapping him on the shoulder laughing mm -hmm. and he swung again and she was on the other side laughing and she had nothing in her hand she was just tapping him with her hands and that's when he knew he had to learn that style that system isn't that funny that's amazing. And that's how, that's how we kind of learned, you know, a, a, a lot of, and they talk about, you know, and I know like, it's like the, it's a fact that, uh, um, see, Lagusa and, and, uh, and, um, and La Costa were born in the same town, uh -huh. La Ka, La Ka. 
So they learn what they, Lagusa said, they learn moral, moral style, plate dancing. That's why they get to shift their body side to side. And so when Flo had learned that from Josephine, that's where the circle patterns of the stick, and same thing with the stick, the constant striking with the stick, mm -hmm. because it's the heavy stick. You know, in a heavy stick or sword, you get a constantly, you're constantly attacking. The defense is there for sure, but you're, the, 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 the offense and defense so it's so combined, it, it's hard to tell them, you know, you, so let's say if you do box pattern or you do some body, you can tell offense, defense, defense, mm -hmm. offense, right? But in that system, it's really hard to tell whether it's defense or offense because the stick is constantly moving. Even if you're, so let's say even if your, your partner is even slow picking up things, you're twirling the stick, well, the twirl means a hit. Mm. So you're automatically in your head really driving yourself and, and training yourself to hit two or three times, even if your partner's not picking that up, you see it? Yeah. That's what makes it a really superb system because you're already two or three beats ahead, you know? So if you say if your partner's slowly doing, they're twirling the stick already, and that's, that's considered a strike or a block, you know, it's, it's already in motion. Mm. Well, so it does he had, remind me of the, the footage of uh, La Costa. You know, there's just a little bit that exists, and it looks like he's dancing. Uh, and if they did both learn that moral, moral style, do you think there's a connection, an actual connection between the La Costa system and the real La Russa system? Uh, the, you, well, you can, you, can, you can see it, especially in the, uh, in the, um, especially in the, in the Parada stance, in the Stokas. You can see La Costa in good parado stances you know the foot out like the cat stance you can mm -hmm. see him twisting you know what i mean like that well what they call traditionally a cat stance right mm -hmm. but it's a, basically a parada peri stance a parada can, a parada means it can go forward or back side to side real fast you know it means peri so you can you can kind of see that movement right and you know now if you take that movement we you know you see somebody like lacoste you shift in left and right side to side i mean you think about that type of movement that can go side to side but now on top of it it adds a sort of like this um what they call optic mm -hmm. this depth power to it that's what like guru ted lakai lakai was specialized like he optic all the time well, you know now that i know ben i always said now that now that i know ben now i know where guru ted got his optic from mm -hmm. for sure Mm -hmm. You know, and to me, anybody can, can argue the point, but I'm telling you, uh, you know, I trained with, uh, with, with Guru Ted for a long time and his father and, and Ben, and I'm telling you, Guru Ted Lakai was a combination of Lacoste and Ben Lagusa mixed. Wow. He was an Oreo cookie of both, in my opinion. You know what I mean? He could, he sort of had that, that, that style to him, you know? That, Do you think that, that that's where the uh, Lakai system gets the, that rhythm training? Yeah, well, his father, his father, you know, Lucky, Lucky is Flo's godson. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and Lucky, <laughs> so Lucky was supposed to be the Apan Tuhan, not Ben Lagusa, mm -hmm. because he was, he was, he, 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 he was Flo's godson, but, but Lucky had killed a man. With it, I think with his with a stick, or oh, I don't know if it was with a stick or his bane. I can't remember, but he had killed a man, you know, one time in a fight, and they didn't want to put a stick in his hand because he and 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 I before I even met Ben and a lot of the older Filipinos like that and Lopez, well, that grew Dan and all those guys already told me that Lucky had was really hot. When he was young, he was a hot-tempered guy. I guess mm -hmm. he would, you know, he could, he could, his fuse would be really short, quick. So you know what I mean. He, if you challenged him, I guess it would be, a, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't have to go very far with it. So I yeah. guess he was hot-tempered when he was younger, right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to put a stick in his hand because they were afraid of what he could do. So what they did is they they trained Ben to do it. Oh. And that's that. And then what they did is they trained Lucky with the Panatukin. And that's how you got Panatukin inside of the Insanto Academy because Lucky was really the, the, the hands guy. And he was, you know, his boxing was, 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 was superb. That's fascinating. You know, uh, my friends would say that, uh, 
that's like the hot blood from the Spanish that got into the got into the, the people there. Oh, it is. No, it is. No, it. The, the, yeah, because you know, you meet some. I mean, I've known a lot of Filipinos, and I was married to a Filipino, right? So you, you, some of them are very like old school tradition, right? Mm -hmm. But then some of them, because I've been in the Philippines many times, but some of them, I mean, you could drop a quarter, and it's like, wow, you know what I mean? You never. It's like your head's coming off. It's just you. It's very sharp, like that. Uh -huh. And uh, usually, the ones that are very sharp, hot tempered, get Spanish blood in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the the more traditional, where well, they didn't have the mixed blood, they're a little bit more uh, sort of like uh, ease. You know what I mean? They're not as hot tempered, and you know, on, yeah. on that. Scale. Well, it seems like they have a little bit of that, like stoicism. My my mom talked about how she had like a favorite. Um, I think it was her grandma, or maybe like a favorite aunt, and uh, I don't know why in particular she was so attracted to her as a personality, but. She had these stories of, uh, it sounds like super old school Filipino where she was just very stoic, never show emotion. And uh, she has this memory, like her grandmother always used to smoke a cigarette with the other, the, the other way. And she always found that super fascinating. So kind of like, it does seem like that, um, even in some of the old stories of like the Moros and stuff like that, they have that side that's like that flash, that passion side, or they're extremely, uh, unemotional that yes yes that's very, that's very very true it's 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 that way even you know like because i until this COVID hit you know I, I have a few affiliated schools over there in groups so you know and i go of course i go over with all my the filipino stuff and do research right and go to the museums and try to you can't you know even the even the traditional you know sanskrit and you can't people because the new generation don't want to know anything about that they don't yeah. really not really into that you know mm -hmm. what i mean at all it just so even going over their research they said geez you know you're more advanced than we are in this stuff mm -hmm. and, you know because they just don't keep up with it so yeah. you know it's kind of lost in a lot of ways you know but uh if you if, if you listen to the that's why if you if you try to get in depth with the stories you know the a lot of them forget the stories or but you can tell by far you know you know this the, the the Spanish blood mix for sure because it's definitely there, you know, and you can see that in the cockfight pits there. Oh yeah, which I experienced. You know, you go in those cockfight pits and it's the size of Home Depot and there's like thousands of people in there betting money. It's just like holy god! It, it reminds me of Thailand being in being in Lumpini Ranja Dam Stadium, you know, yeah. of, of the Thai fights, you know. So it it's it is you know there is it, it does exist for sure you know and I think in Lucky's case you know it probably it probably did although I've always found Ted grew Ted just to be such like almost like a surfer he was just so laid back you know what I mean you didn't know whether he when he was going to teach whether he was going to be writing it on the back of like a shoebox or what he was he just didn't he, you know he he just had it genetically built and he was like Herman Swanner was the same way you know what I mean. Yeah. I asked Guru Herman so what do I talk? I said, what are you going to teach today? Because I had spent a lot of private time with him back in the day. And it was like, I have no idea until you're going to swing a punch at me. You know, since I always thought that was hilarious, you know. <laughs> it just, you know, but, uh, yeah. So, I, you know, um, but Ben, I always, can. Ben was very composed, you know. Very, you know, and, and I mean, if you look at him when he was in his prime, holy God, he was built like a, like a brick, you know what I mean? He, he very always composed, never out of, uh, you know, uncomposed. And what does that mean? He was from, from his hair to his whole, yeah. you know, everything was very put together well. He never, he never was out of his, his sort of like, he was always almost in perfect harmony all the time, which yeah. is strange. You know what I mean? Because you, yeah. you think you'd find like he would, but, and then, um, so every time he talked, it was always keyed on. I mean, he took his time to talk and he really keyed on on and even when he would demonstrate, he would he would key on rhythm, mm -hmm. time and angulation, you know. And then once in a while out of the blue moon, he'll throw something so damn humorous in there you couldn't help but not to laugh. You know what I mean? He was so funny on that extreme end. Uh -huh. So he had a you know, he was one of the uh, there was seven people that that demonstrated you know at the 1964 long beach tournament there was a 64 and a 65 mm -hmm. 
I have a I have the original tape from the '64. Really? I ever released it. Yeah, the Ben Magusa in the ring demonstrating Kali for the first time. Wow. Yeah, I haven't released it yet. But th this is the thing, too. And there was seven of them. There was Ben Lagusa, Fuma, I can't remember all of them, and a couple of karate, John Reed, and then there was Bruce Lee, and, and, and there was seven masters to perform. But that was the first time that anybody had seen Kali wow. in public. Well, even in those yeah. pictures, in the old pictures of uh, Ben Lagusa, I mean, he would even always have like the cool, the cool uniform, one that similar to what you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that that uniform has to be my. So my uniform was made by uh, his sister, Lillian. Lillian is the one that made all the all the uniforms for the Filipinos because you can't buy those. Those are just they're not really. You know what I mean? So she would she would measure you and hand make them. Oh, really? Back in the day, yeah, and put her name inside of them, handmade by Lillian Lagusa. Oh my God! She was the uniform. So, but so I always said. So you know, I mean, I for me, even as a younger, people always ask me. Even when I was young, I always hung around with older people. I never, I never, I, I've always, ever since a teenager, I never, you know, all, even from my grandparents, right? Even when I was a teenager, I was in the woods with my grandfather. You know, what I mean, I was always hanging around with much older people than myself. You know, I, I, that's how I got wisdom quick. And I did search it. It was just the fact that I hung around with people all the time, mm. three times, four times my age. I always found them more interesting. I always found them in plus what I was doing. It, 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 because remind you, uh, my, my work, my profession to support my martial art career was I was a historical renovator. Mm -hmm. I would take old homes and I would, you know, I, so when I lived in LA, I was, I was handling already $2 million contract homes. Mm. So, you know what I mean? That's why I own two or three homes today. Cause I just, I, 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 I never put it in cars. I just always bought, you know, homes and renovated them and fixed them and just rent them. And so that was my job. So I always liked historical things. I was always into it. You know, I was always into it. So my job was, was easy for me because my passion of martial arts was easy to learn historical things. Mm -hmm. So around Ben Lagusa and being around Ben Lagusa, I mean, you're gonna, you mean, you know, you're going to learn a ton of knowledge, but that's just, it's, it's just, you can't find it. You can't find that stuff. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a, oh, cow gosh, right? All this, all these great masters, you just can't get it, you know? So I would hang out with them all the time, all the time. And when he can, that's right. So when the uniform, they're, when he performs, they, they're always, you know, they're in that uniform or, you know, they're always in perfect formation. Even with the way they line up from the, you know, high rank students back to the lower rank and the lower rank have to look up to the upper. They never break that tradition hmm. because that is Di Quintana. It's the, if you see the patch or you see the logo, it's the chain on the side. It means the link. So, the the younger students, the new students, right, or the apprentices, are linked to the masters, because life is linked like that. You have children, you raise your children, you have to teach them knowledge, right? The 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 masters have to teach the apprentice. The apprentice have to teach the masters, and that's what they're called. Dikantana is the chain means the chain link, but Dikantana means also. Not just that on the spiritual in, uh, side of the teacher and student, but it also means that in the weapon tree and the striking, to strike constantly, to block constantly, to move constantly means to be linked together. So it's his ability to teach that and to be focused on things of that nature, that one item, let's say for an example, really teaches you a different aspect of what Kali is all about, right? Because you're learning not just the ability to attack or defend or be able to be a very skilled warrior, but you're also being taught to be a very highly skilled human being and the teacher mm. at the same time, you see? And that's, that's where a lot of their sort of like root comes from and how they they sort of like focus themselves on and it's very powerful it's extremely powerful and i can tell you you know there's times i'm telling you i felt you know people can say oh you know you're superstitious but i'm telling you when you're in that circle and you feel that energy you can almost feel the past near you wow. as strange as that feels you know because they call that in and they believe that you know 
and it's you know hey you know people can say what they want but you know if you're in church and everybody's praying there's, there is a sense that you do feel that's beyond you right mm -hmm. i mean you know you, you don't have to believe it but you certainly you know you or a temple or a thai temple i mean or a buddhist temple or, or wherever you are you know yeah. religion wise islam or whatever you do feel you know there is a sense beyond you mm -hmm. because as we teach uh nikali we're only mortals we're not anymore. We're not. We're not past the dead yet, right? Mm -hmm. So we are. We have to humble ourselves because we are. The, we we're, we're not at that peak. We haven't reached to that high level yet. And they teach that into the into the form of combat as well. Mm -hmm. So can, I said to myself, "You can you imagine being on that scale of thinking, right? So in in combat, it wouldn't be hard for these men." or these women or to be very effective and be extremely fearful mm -hmm. of uh initiating you know death on an end of a sword or defending because they had no distractions of cell phone bills mm -hmm. they didn't have not just the elements away from them but really all they had to gain was their whole sense of spirituality because really at the end of that day, the only important thing was the savior of yourself and your family, mm -hmm. right? And the food, yeah. the shelter. There's nothing really much more to concentrate on. So if you thought about putting that much concentration on something, of course your skill level is gonna be extremely high. I always said that the past is more skilled than we are today. Mm -hmm. Guru Dan, I think, says it a little differently. And I think he's right on some senses because the knowledge is spread out vastly. We do have, you know, capability to it. But there's not many people moving like Bruce Lee. Well, I'm, I, I think that yeah. happens even with lots of things. I remember watching a documentary on the, the boxer Jack Johnson. And, uh, you know, in, in that time, because it was like, the, it must have been the 20s or something when he was, you know, uh, in his heyday. Because it was before the, the kind of Hanoi boxing era, and uh, you know he was like a womanizer. He had lots of you know white white women, and he was a black man, and wherever he was. But he they would they read some of the stuff in the documentary. They read some of his writings, like letters or something. And uh, even in the quality, even here in the U.S., the quality of speech writing. If you read like the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, like beautifully written writing and politicians do not write or speak like that today and so i certainly think that there's some degradation in some ways over time because uh, maybe the in original intention is lost or maybe there's you know something else so when you talk about you know you've talked in some of your you've written in some of your posts about um kind of like these deep and formal training methods is this what you're talking about like that that side that's very reverent and connected to the past yeah and 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 you know and that being said when you're when you're uh you know when you're connected like that right so you're not just physically performing now you're mentally and you're spiritually performing and that's why your body mechanics look so appealing hmm. that's why they look so different because your whole being is now one with the collie, right? It's it's not separated anymore. Mm -hmm. It's it's one with it, and that's why there's no. It's funny because when I do some broader, you know, like I time slows down for me. I can see movement before it's even thrown, just because of the body language and mechanics and the way it's directed and the way because I've been just doing this for so long. But it's beyond that. It's because of how the collie prepares me to actually bow myself, sort of like beyond the thinking of physical mm -hmm. you know it's it's it, it does prepare you like that it, re it really really does and 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 of course that, that that system being you know circle and pattern and flanking and tired and, and, and mohara and, and the way it moves the stuff and, and it's angulation it's it does definitely give it a whole different you know meaning too you know so girls so you sure. Do you Go think ahead. that the um the old style like Banantukan, the kind that came from the Libreo and the Lucky Hat, did that also have a, a substantive quality that was different than 
you know, just uh, maybe what people think of today as uh, Filipino boxing or Panatuka or dirty boxing. Did it have that? Well, I think also? I, I do. And if you see it demonstrated, it looks almost like very um, sub karate ish, right? It looks very, it looks very, because it's being demonstrated. Mm -hmm. But I, I can tell you that I think today what we see is we see a lot of, even in the stick, you see a lot of fast motions, almost like hand trapping and a lot of quick strikes, a very light stick, obviously, because the only way you could throw a stick like that, throw it like that with a light stick, right? Short, light stick. But that, everything is sort of like, it's the same in, in, in society, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we want to, when we want to call somebody and we want to get in touch with somebody or we want something, we, we have a, a cell phone or a tablet, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Or we want something to drink or something. There's convenience stores everywhere, right? Yeah. You're in your car, you need something. From You want something at home, you look on a camera, you press a button. You, it, so life itself is moving fast. So what is martial arts doing? It's moving fast as well. Yeah. You can see it. The, the whole integrity of the baseline of it is moving very quickly. The sea lights moving very quickly. That's true. The hand trapping is moving very quickly. The, the, the stick drills are moving very quickly now. The, so everything's moving much, much at a faster pace, right? The grappling's moving much, you know, it's mm. much, much faster pace. Doesn't yeah. mean that it's stronger or it's more effective. It just means that it's really just keeping up with society's sort of like calling. Yes. But if you look at the older stuff, you don't want to ever get hit by just one of those strikes because it will end everything of your fastness, you know? Mm. That you know, seven pound garrote hits you square in the head, it will be much different than that rattan. I can guarantee you that, you know? It, and with the quality of the, the hit behind it looking like Babe Bruce swinging at a home run, it's gonna really, really be effective. Yeah. So, you know, it would be the same as Kyle Gotch, you know, he puts a lock on you and you don't wanna feel that. It's very painful. It's extremely mm -hmm. like electricity going through your body, you know? And uh, it's the quality. It's not the fast the pace, it's the quality behind it. And it's mm -hmm. the same thing I believe that the, yes, the old method, it's losing its whole, you know, unless you can, you, you can find it, you just gotta lift up rocks to find it, right? Mm -hmm. But the whole sort of like martial art trend moves very quickly now. Yeah. And it trends, right? It just is sort of like just trends along and whatever's famous or whatever's going on, it just sort of like, Picks up, picks up, picks up, picks up, picks up, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of see how that, and movies do, right? So if you go to the movies, it has influence. Yeah. Like, damn, man, that was such a great move on, you know, so cool. It's moving fast, yeah. right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's more effective. You know, that's that's where, because combat really is, Kyle Gotsu, there's only so much, many ways to move in combat, you know, yeah. and, and there's not, you know, it can be more dynamic because mm -hmm. of the film footage and stuff, but. It certainly doesn't mean it moves. So, perfect example. Do you think gladiators back in Raw were more fearful today, right, than back then? I I, I wouldn't want to face a Roman gladiator today. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, I don't think anybody would. I think their thought process was much different. I think their their they could take life without a blinking of an eye with the sport, you know, and and be very highly skilled in it, you know. So their method or their way had to be very um, um, supportive, mm -hmm. right? It had to be, or they wouldn't live. Yeah. And I think that's the same. When you think about Flora, 138 fights, and there's, I think, was the 30, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 36 or 38 confirmed kills. That's why the stars are on the back of the belt. Oh, wow. So, you know, and it's, I mean, you know, and I'm telling you, I, I, I talked to his wife one time and she told me straight out, she says, you would want to see one of those, she was serious, she says, you would want to see one of those fights as much as you're interested in them. Because they're, you know, and she did tell me, I, 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 I you know, I provoked her to tell me, you know, and, and I was shocked because, you know, to hear a woman say, you know, one, you know, a guy's jaw is completely over the other side of his face. And by the time he hit the mat, he's, he's just, he's dead. He's not even alive. You know what I mean? So it's over within a second. It's like those cock fights you watch. Mm -hmm. You're like, <laughs> you're like what, just, what happened? You know what I mean? Yeah. I say, you know, the chicken can't walk. He's just, you know, he's cut up. So it was that fast. So 
it wouldn't be sort of like this back and forth of like trapping and moving in just quickly. It's just really over quick, uh -huh. you know? And it's not magic. It's just a very, very heavy stick coming in at a very precise angle. And, you know, it, it, would, it would break pretty much anything. That, that's why he preferred that garrote because mm -hmm. it was heavy and it was hard and it was, it was going to break through, you know, most people's rattan and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I, I mean, I'm always it. very fascinated by that, uh, some of the older material, you know, because Guru Dan goes through these phases, sometimes quick phases in months and sometimes phases for years. And it's interesting to, you know, to talk to or to see some of his students from different eras or different generations because they have different aspects. But I've always been so fascinated with, the, you know, the Lukai Lukai era, the, you know, the Lacosta movement. Um, and, you know, Guru's always doing something different because he's, he's on his own path of progression and evolution. But um, I've always been fascinated with that. And I, it doesn't seem like either there's not as many people that do it or they're not talking about it or they're not teaching it. So that's something that I've appreciated with you because you keep that still out there. Yeah. Well, we also remember too that uh, that's the other thing, right? So we live in a very popular martial art world today. Mm -hmm. Everybody teaches Filipino martial arts. Everybody's teaching Penjok Silat. Everybody's teaching JK. It's, it's very, it's on every street block. It's like jujitsu. Everybody's teaching jiu you know what I mean? Yeah. So that being said, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. But what ends up happening is, is the faster technique that people can get, get picked up quickly and the more complex matters, right? Or items of the martial art forms or whatever systems or whatever you want to call them, they get left behind because it takes much longer time to learn that type of skill. Mm. It takes a much longer time to learn how to flank somebody left and right in Tayada Mahara and turn back into their hit than to just stand in front and do, you know, a, a, like a block, 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 you know, pick up, pick yeah. up. Right. It's, it's the, 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 the debt of learning that has to be your feet have to learn how to move very well, right? So you, you know, where I, a lot of the number of these styles now, your feet don't have to move all that well. Mm -hmm. You know, the hands have to move more yeah. than the feet. But, you know, when your feet have to move just as well and just as quick as the stick, that's where you start to see that Lakai, Villabro, Lagoose, or, you know, that whole style come in because the, the body now is starting to move. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not staying in front of the stick anymore. It's starting to really move around, and that's what makes it very appealing. Because, you know, now you're looking at something that can move in a very, very, you know, uh, four corner direction way. Sure. That's very, very effective, right? And that's not usually you don't really get to see that. So when you do see and you did start to see a move, it does look like the old Lacosta, Villabello, Lacai style. You know, I you know it's funny because I always. When I first went to the Insano Academy, I would learn from Guru Dan, you know, and you see the Lagomanos and all that. Then I would look over and see Teddy on like a side. And I was like, why does he move so different than Guru Dan? And he's Guru Dan's number one student. Mm -hmm. I was like, he moves so bad. It's like, it's like night and day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why I had to learn under him because he just moved so differently, you know? Well, you're talking about, so, um, you know, restoring homes. And, uh, you know, and my dad, my dad's family is from Batangas, actually pretty close to Barrio, but uh, Barrio Batangas were like, or Barrio Balisong. And so uh, in the Philippines, as I'm sure you know by now, because you've been there, there's these old, like, in these families, they'll have these like old ancestral homes. And the quality of the woodwork, it's phenomenal. Like, it's extremely beautiful. And it's lasted so long. It's lasted through these wars. It's lasted through like the Mount Pinatubo or whatever, you know, kinds of crazy things that are going. And people aren't necessarily learning that craft and making things like they used to. But that old stuff is what's really un unlike anything else that's kind of mass produced today. Well, it's the, it's right. It's the teak wood. And then it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, you know, the butterfly joints and it's the, it, you know, and it's the, it's, it's how they, you know, member them together. And then those houses move with the earth very well. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, those houses are not like the cement houses. Now where the earth moves, they crack, right? Those houses move with the earth. Interesting. That's why they lasted so long. 
because they can move and adapt with the earth because the wood quality and then the wood quality alone is old growth it's not new growth wood it, it's just it's hard as a rock mm -hmm. you know what i mean if a tree has been growing for 400 years and a tree's have been only growing for 60 years it's a totally different quality wood wow you know thought about that yeah yeah so i, I my house today that i live in today is a is, a, is, a, is an 1890 post and b and this house is is i mean well this is just I don't see this. Those are all real posts and beams. So that's still the whole house. Wow. So when the wind moves, you can feel this. This, this is a massive house. You can feel it just move. Wow. You know what I mean? It's just that you can, but it moves with the, that's why it's lasted so long. So you don't want to get rid of those homes because those homes, are, like you say, are worth a lot of money and they have outlasted. Mm -hmm. Now the new generation comes along. They don't like those homes because mm -hmm. they like the more sleek look, the cement look, the more retro style, the lacquer, right? It doesn't appeal to them, mm -hmm. which is this is fine because it's the style, but yeah. the, the quality is by far night and day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what you just, you have to kind of realize like what you're, you know, what, what, what you're, what you're in for. Right. But the new, like, you're right. So the, the old houses will, that can be, they can stand a thousand, two thousand years. Yeah. The cement will, once the earth shifts, it can, it can crack right up the middle very quickly, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to repair it and do all types of things. I mean, you know, the building trade is certainly advanced, but you can, you can definitely see that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in the martial art. Yeah. It's the same in the martial art. You know, spending one on one time in a garage with Kyle Gotch is definitely different than spending time, you know, watching a YouTube ch channel, watching some Biamba. Yeah. I can tell you because he gives you the influence of his background. He gives you the, the, the feel of what he was doing, right. Or what he's doing and what he means. And then on top of it, he makes you learn it. And there was the same thing with Ben Lagusa. It's like, wow. Like, you know what I mean? Like what, they, they, I, at one point in time, I thought I was Filipino Hawaiian actually at one time. I said, geez, I actually feel like I'm actually Filipino now. You know what I mean? That they make you actually feel that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? that's that's that they really bring you into that circle you know they don't break that line and i always found that very you know because i always found that very attractive because i have been down the road you know learning from Gurdan or other people and i've been down that type of sort of like teaching level but i never got to really you know you go i i would say i've always said this i think guru dan's best spiritual moments were at a thai restaurant at 10 11 o'clock at night mm -hmm. Was it in the classroom? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, in that and like under Ben Lagusa or Lopez, at late at night in the garage, and you know, it just it was it was just it was it was extremely unbelievable. And now I know why Guru Dan learned so well because mm -hmm. he was under that same influence. You know, he was under that same back then. Filipinos only hang around with Filipinos, and they had you know and they would party. They had parties and dinners, and and Guru Dan was you know up, up there every week and learning and. I remember there was a story that Lopez told me one time and he said, you know, I, they used to call him Danny. I, 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 Flora, I guess, would call him Danny. He was like, hey, uh, they used to call each other uncles and stuff like that too, you know. So I don't know how he pronounced it. But he, and he, they were pointing outside. Well, Guru Dan was out learning the chick. He was chicken stepping all the way around the pool, backwards and frontwards and stuff. He just, you know, they were going over chicken step that day. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Filipinos, and you know, after they train and stuff like that, and they have a lot of people around, then they start to party, right? They start yeah. to eat food and, you know, karaoke and all. Yeah. Well, Guru Dan's outside doing chicken stuff all the way around the pool, backwards and forward and stuff. And that sounds like Guru Dan, you know yeah. what I mean? He was just drilling that right away, yeah. you know? So if you're around that environment, you can't but be not good, you know? I just, what happened, and what really what happened was, is that the, the martial art trade got, so popular and then people started making money at it of course that old school method of teaching now is is goes away because mm -hmm. you can't teach that and you can teach bits and pieces of it in the weekend but you can't really teach the method of how that moves over you know a, a, a period of like a good three or four years in the weekend it just it can't happen you know what i mean because it's so in depth of how mechanically it moves rhythmatically and you know it, it just it moves on a such different scale rhythmatically it's it's by far in my opinion superior than than most systems so it's it, it's it's hard to teach that you know in a in a front of a 60 50 people at a time you know what sure. i mean because it's very detailed 
you know, if you're, if you're, you know, and they would be like that. If your stick was, you know, off, you know, that much on an, on a, on a stoker stance, it'd be like, you know, well, you reference you're, not, you're not doing it right. You know, these days, What's people, that? Uh, you reference the fact that these days people want things right away. Everything moves fast. And you mm -hmm. have an aspect about you, at least from my perception, that can, you're okay being patient, kind of sitting, sitting in the time or sitting in the stillness, if you will. And it reminds me, because you also spent some time learning traditional um, Japanese tea ceremony, right? That's right, seven years. Yeah, I'm, so a second, I'm, a, I'm a second rank in Japanese tea ceremony. That's amazing. Oh, to my yeah. So, you know, you, I mean, you talk about patience, right? Uh -huh. I mean, you have to sit on a sancha and really sit in position and learn how to pour tea or make tea, you know, for hours, you so, know, which is, you know, which is not, I can tell you, it's, 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 very, yeah, it's very difficult to say the least. So that's super impressive. What what inspired you to even pursue that? Well, I, you, you know, in the in the in the in the auto well, in samurai, the, in the only black belt I hold in, in Japanese art is I, when I was when I was uh, uh, a teenager. I have a black belt in judo, so I used to compete in judo quite a bit. But um, in tea, I didn't know anything about tea for one. You know, I, I actually met my tea master in a. a I was intrigued by Japanese wood making mm -hmm. and I would go to this, this Japanese, this, this Japanese wood um, furniture store in San Francisco. Right. And then I saw, I, I, I saw, I, I saw a tea master there, you know, performing. Mm. Right. And that's how I got involved in, 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 in tea. So um, that being said, um, uh, how I, how I, um, and I was very intrigued by her, the female, she was 85 years old mm -hmm. and how, you know, they, they poured this tea. And I always knew about tea a little bit because in samurai warriorship that a samurai has to learn either woodworking or calligraphy, right? Or, uh, a, a, a writing or tea. Huh. He has to learn one of those three items other than killing. That's mandatory. So tea ceremony, when I first saw it, I was like, Jesus, very, very you know, it, it was, in the, in the beginning, it was very physical for me. But once I got really involved in tea, and I did get really involved, um, like it. it's very zen. It's very zen because you're in it. You, you remind yourself you're in a tea, a tea house that has no nails. It's all put together by uh, craftsmanship of, of joints. Oh. And the paint, the pigment can be painted. It's, it's very, it's, it's, this, it keeps the outside, the outside world, you know, uh, out, so wow. to speak, you know, you know, it really, really does. So it's very, very, uh, uh, in depth. And then when you, when you do tea, you almost lose, you're supposed to lose and you do, you, you lose a sense of this sort of like, uh, today's time. Mm -hmm. you're brought back to a time that does you know that that doesn't almost exist any, at all anymore mm -hmm. and you know my tea master she was a female and being uh you know 85 was very 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 zen very very in debt and very mm -hmm. zen you know very very dead so i just you know again um i i i'm sorry i'm just well, my, my, i'm trying to get my son to gain weight so if anybody wants to know how you get your son to gain weight, right there. Nice. <laughs> well, I'm pretty good he's, at the gaining weight. He's, he's, I'm trying to get him to gain some weight. So he's, uh, he, he's, uh, we'll get that cream right on him. I'm big into that, you know? Okay, but no, no, no. I got to do this. Okay, you go. Yeah, there you go. And you put that back. So that's funny. I'm trying to get him to gain weight. Yeah. That's how I get him to gain weight. But being back to tea, you know, that's you, you you know you're you're supposed to surround yourself you know with the flower arrangements and you're supposed to pour the best cup of tea you possibly can pour and make it and you make this tea without saying anything you don't say anything to your guest at all you don't smile you don't have any facial expression and you only there's only enough in in that bowl for three sips and it's a very zen style you know, that's what, what what was founded by Zen Zen monks. You know, Raku was a Zen uh, was a Zen priest, and 
Raku pottery and you're supposed to appreciate and then tea is supposed to, you know, tea bowls can be three or 400 years old, a couple hundred years old and all the utensils are very old and they're made by, you know, master craftsmen. And it gives you a sense of respect of our, you know, flowers, usually flower arrangements, not like the flower arrangement we see in the United States, right? It's a single flower. Yeah. So the beauty of a single element is supposed to be intrigued, right? And when you write, you know, with a calligraphy, you're supposed to write with, when, once you touch the paper, you're not supposed to lift it. You're supposed to have a thought process of start and finish. And it's the same thing in tea. You're, you're supposed to make tea and flow through this very strenuous, detailed process of making tea. And I can tell you it's very detailed from folding the silk cloth to wiping it and everything's, uh, you know, it, without thinking. So it's hard to do. It's a very, you know, you're supposed to do this very detailed way of making tea without thinking, mm -hmm. which is really, how do you do that? You know, so to me after a while, um, it, but again, there proves a basis. If I didn't have uh, Sinkino, since I Sinkino for a tea master, which was, she was a female, my first female teacher, I don't know if I would have been interested in tea, hmm. but her character really magnet me to her. She was very, very, I, I'll tell you, I saw things with her. It was almost like I, I didn't see before. It was, you know, I mean, they don't even eat the same food we do. They don't, it's just, you know, they, I saw things that I thought I would never see before, you know, and you almost can't believe it almost. Yeah. It's just so far fetched, you know, but again, her character drew me into her mm -hmm. and I learned a lot from her. I, I, I learned, you know, not only was she a great tea master, but you know, I found it all great masters have a very humorous side to them. It's funny. They laugh at life almost, mm -hmm. you know, we take life serious. And when we drop the ball or something happens to us, we almost break down emotionally. We can't yeah. even go they almost laugh at it yeah like it's natural to happen like it's natural not to be possessive so whatever happens you lose it's supposed to happen huh. they have this way about them that is very almost magnet you almost become like i'm drawn to it you know because i don't understand that how i always no i can't lose that i'm very I'm, I, I need to grip onto it. it's not you know no it's supposed to go you, mm -hmm. you it's 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 supposed to happen you know and they have this very humorous way about them to 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 to, to present that to you it's the same thing with Lagos. you know i remember screwing up Lagos and lopez and be like i don't know you're supposed to screw up it's supposed to you know it's just weird they have that side to them you mm -hmm. know well it's, it's like it's a beautiful compliment to all the other things that you've done it almost sounds like she's sort of your version of the blind princess Did I lose you, Guru? Uh, almost. Okay. okay no, so, you're back. There you go. Uh, slightly you go. stormy yeah. here, so I don't know if that's... Uh, oh, stormy. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're going, yeah. You're yeah. getting hit with a couple of those storms, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean... so that process, yeah. that's why I say that process and that relationship between student apprentice to mastery that is you can uh, that is to me is is that's the old method and it's so hard to get and if you can get it then you start to then that's why you see guys move well that's why you see things like the you can't really believe the way they move and how they move because they were taught on that level mm -hmm. i if i i can tell you i never ben the ben ben Lagusa to me was the most impressive man i've ever seen i never for one i never seen anybody move that fast and for two, I never seen anybody be rhythmically move with his feet tap dance like Fred Astaire and be able to hit w with a stick like that. His feet was tapping at the same time the stick was hitting. You know, and I'm, I mean, it was, it, I've never, I've seen a lot of people too move. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of people move. And I, Lagusa was, 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 un, I, it was astonishing to see him move. It was very impressive, and it's very hard for me to say very impressive. He was extremely impressive yeah. moving with a stick. 
I, I can see why they wanted him to be Cato. I can see why a lot of people, you know, I, it, he was very extremely impressive mm-hmm. with, a, with, with a stick in his movement of his feet. Never seen anybody move like that before. It was, it was, it was, it was quite, quite impressive to say the least. He knew rhythm, I think, beyond most people. Mm-hmm. He, he really did, you know. So one of these days, Drew, I'd love to come up and uh, you know learn anytime. from him and you know any any time. You know that I you know I really my goal was to really kind of teach this old school stuff in the new seminars because you know it's 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 needed in a lot of ways. Yes. it really really is. You know, and I think you know, and and it's it's sometimes you know it's good to follow. Up. It's good. Well. I don't mean this in a destructive way, right? But we know all societies fall. Mm-hmm. The Roman Empire fell. They thought it was going to last forever. Sometimes we know nature itself fails and collapses to rebuild. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing in, the, in, in, in this profession. I think it's a good thing that we need to fall, fall and fail. And then we need to now rebuild. Yeah. Because it, it, it's actually, it was needed believe mm-hmm. it or not it was it was kind of needed because the technique really was losing itself yeah you know it really was and it's not it's not it's not one party saying that the other party's better or less or worse and this is jealousy and envy. it has nothing to do with that it's the quality in the what listen if somebody's going to teach filipino martial arts and they don't even have the education behind it and the history behind it and the technique behind it and they just have the surface how are you going to teach that pass that on yeah you know as as a as an instructor or a teacher or somebody that even wants to learn the more in debt you should be seeking out the the stuff that you you can't get hold of the stuff that's really valuable Mm -hmm. right so that is needed because it's not there anymore it just doesn't exist you know it's it's and why does it exist well it doesn't get passed on yeah. You know, it's too, time is, is precious to a lot of people. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the time value is just, it, it's, it's not there, but I think there's a huge need for it. You know, I think there's a huge, huge, and so if you, if you go back to tea ceremony, right, to make a perfect cup of tea takes patience, mm-hmm. right? It takes extremely, extremely patience. to. So do you have five if you and everybody's like we we drank coffee right i drink coffee still right you drink some coffee you're like god oh my god this i can't even drink this right it's just terrible then you drink some coffee and you can smell it through your nose you can smell almost the bean where it comes from and you can see the rainbow oil on top it's so you know what i mean yeah and that's the same thing with tea like you, you can drink four cups of tea five cups of tea and be like oh god this stuff so then you drink you know three sips and you're like man that stuff was the most unbelievable stuff i ever tasted yeah <laughs> so it's the it's really the quality a lot of times right that we that we i think we need to be into this today's society of martial arts that we're missing it's just it's agree. just there's a lot of old school guys uh just the old school knowledge is just not being passed down like it was you know because it's, it's the time it's the time frame you know so it was my goal really and I had a lot of seminars this year, 2020, that got canceled because of COVID. It just ruined a lot of stuff for me. So, but I was hoping, you know, that, you know, uh, that was my goal was to actually pass on those traditional formats, you know, so people could start, try to sort of like get it and pick it up, you know. Yeah. But now I got to teach it on a computer, <laughs> which is not the same. Yeah. You know, I can tell you it's not the same. If I need to shift your shoulders or I need to like, um. you know, yeah, and feel you and you know i need to like angle you and stuff I, you know it's i mean i can get I, we can get some bases of it but you, mm-hmm. it's hard to you know it's, for, to feel me physically it's 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 difficult you yeah. know yeah well you know i could ask you about so many more things through but i know you know i want to be respectful of your time um i'd love to get you down here one of these times when uh you know Someone was saying that uh, with everyone saying like when COVID, when this COVID stuff ends, something like that, they're like, it's starting to sound a lot like when people would say, one day when I win the lottery, it's going to be like this. But, um, you know, I, I, I do know. believe that it's, it will be like that, you know. I know. It's very, you know, I, I, it's, 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 you know, we live in a very strange time now. It's, we, everything's unpredictable. Nothing's predictable anymore. It's yeah. very... 
you don't know when it will end or you don't know when it will begin again, right? And it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's a very strange time to, to, yeah. to live in. It's a very uncertain time to live in. And to me, it's scary a lot of times. You know, we're very, we're living right on the edge of, I, I think this is a time where we're really, um, we either got to come together as a unit and really focus or work, you know, we could be, this could be, you know, this could be a huge big bump in, in, yeah. in, 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 in the human, you know, in the human life race, that's for sure. So, sure. you know, we'll see where it goes and we'll just, we'll see if we're, we're, we're capable enough to do that as, 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 as a unit. But um, yeah, any, you know, I would, you know, I mean, traveling is so dangerous now. People just don't want to, you know, they don't want to get near you and, yeah. you know, schools, uh, you know, distance and mask and, yeah. you know, so, but any, you know, any time that we can we can do it, I'll certainly be up for it. Yeah. Well, again, I, I, I can't thank you enough for your time tonight, Guru. And uh, you know, I have so much more to ask you as far as like Carl Gotch about you know everything uh, else that you do. But um, you know, it takes, thank you for... it takes I'm right I'm writing a few books. It just it takes such a lifetime. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just it's it, each each one has its own character. Yeah. And how do you, you know? And how do you just you know? I mean, I've been very fortunate to train with the people I've trained with, that's for sure. And, you know, and my goal is just now, because I do this for a living, it's, it's of course to teach people, you know, but I'm, I'm my, really, I, you know, I focused on, cause I, you know, I had so much, a lot of technique and all that, but really I wanted to focus on the characteristics of people understanding these, what it felt like to be around these. Yeah. So once you get to feel how these people move, you can kind of mimic that. You yeah. can pick that up. You know what I mean? And that's really what I wanted to try to traditionally pass down. Yeah. So hopefully it will get back to that point. But anytime, anytime. Okay. All right. Thank you again. I'm going to. You uh, stay safe. Thank you so and, much. And, you too. And, 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 keep, and keep your good work up in, 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 the, in the hospitals. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, you guys are on the front lines. I don't know how yeah. you do it. You well, know. you know, just like with everything, just like yourself, just like with that, with all of us through our, our trials. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, and I value, I value all the time that I have with, you know, with, with, with any, with any one of you. That's why I went out to in and out Burger with you guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even know what time it was. It was like 1 a.m. in the morning or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. Did I even eat one of those? I'm not even sure. I think you I did, can't. but, um, uh, you did. For sure, because um, that, that's a rarity. Yeah, <laughs> I probably you probably I probably enjoyed the shake more than the burger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, but that's a famous place, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a great time, and I, you know, it just came to me as a shock, you know, with with I just couldn't believe it, you know. Yeah. But it just goes to show you how precious really life is, you know. Yeah. It really is, you know, and it's and it's where we have to sadly enough life is a fight in it and, and to give you know what i mean you, you have to you have to, you definitely have to give it you get a you get a fight and then you know you get you 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 got you get a uh you get a defeat too you know right? so you have to have victory and, and you have to have the defeat all yeah. in one it's just it's weird it's strange you know it's strange phenomenal but um yeah. well speaking so, of that night you know i i'm almost positive afterwards um I was with Guru Victor, but it wasn't that night, it was the next night or something. And um, I had asked him at the time, I was like, hey, can I interview you for this? I'm trying to do like a podcast. And he was like, hey, do you want to do the podcast? And honestly, Guru, I was tired. I was like really sleepy. I was like, because of the East Coast time difference. And it was late. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, yeah, let's just do it. I mean, we have time. And I was like, okay. So we did it. And, you know, he, he passed away soon after that. And I was so happy, and his family too was so happy that, really, um, in my opinion, with no sort of planning, just kind of coincidence, that I was able to capture a conversation and you know talk about his history and you know so I, just like your work to try to um, keep the legacy of your teachers and your instructors and those systems alive, um, that's some of what this this podcast is too. So thank you for being part of it. Good. Well, thank you and keep up the work. Okay. Thanks, Guru. All right.